Gary Whitaker, welcome to the Plant Yourself podcast. Yo, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. I was so happy. I didn't know who you were. And then I started seeing you like popcorn sh shooting into my social media. Like you got a lot of attention for this beautiful thing you did recently. You wanna, can you just introduce yourself and tell us what you're up to? Yeah, my, my name is Gary Whitaker. I am the owner and founder of Plant Based Fitness. Um, I've been on a plant based diet for about 10 years, um, you know, and I just enjoy seeing people healthy. You know, and so that that journey has, uh, you know, inspired me to, you know, be able to bring change in a lot of people's lives as well as my family and friends and different things like that. So, you know, um, I finally got me a new space and, you know, it's kind of uh, one of those things where if you follow your alignment, things just come to you. Ah, oh, beautiful. So what is plant based fitness? It's, a, it's an actual location. It's a gym. Yeah, so so plant based fitness is an actual gym. Uh, it's over in o in the Oakland area, Oakland, California, right by Lake by the Lake Lake, lake Merritt. Uh -huh. um, and what we do is we do nutrition coaching, we do small group training, we do semi private training, and we do personal training. Um, and the the main thing that we are is we're a transformation studio. So one of the things that I notice about uh, when people when I was in fitness myself, just like. Uh, learning and transforming my own body because I, I was about 260 at one point in time. I lost about 50 pounds. Um, I gained the 50 pounds back because I went back to my old eating habits and then I lost it again. And so over the total, I probably lost over 100 pounds. But one of the things that I noticed is that it wasn't a really big approach on plant based nutrition and fitness. And so the only thing that I did was I just took those things that I found were missing and I created my own solution. And that was plant based fitness. Hmm. So so you, you were up to 260 and like what at that like how how long ago was that the first time you decided to lose 50 pounds? That was probably like about uh, it was probably like about 2007. OK, so like that, 11, that was, 11 years ago. Yeah, and that what, was about the time. Uh -huh. So what did you do? Is that when you first went plant based or well, that was before? Well, so this is the thing. I didn't go plant based at that time. Um, but what I did start doing is I did start incorporating more vegetables and fruits into my diet. Okay. So I had, I had this time where it was a guy. Um, what's his name? John John Biardi. OK, um, one of one of my trainers, he was following him and he's like a well-known nutrition guy or whatever. And he gave me his plan. And so I was following it and it, it worked. It yielded me good results. It did have meat in it. And so during that time I was eating meat. But one thing I can say is I think it kind of prepped me because I was eating more vegetables and more fruit. So I was eating five servings of fruit, five servings of vegetables every day. Uh huh. Got it. So, I mean, that, that sounds like a very sustainable diet for a lot of people. But I'm wondering, it, it doesn't sound like that was transformation with a capital T for you. No, it, it, it wasn't because, you know, one of the things that I've learned about even all my studies in nutrition is that, you know, you got you got habits uh, and, you know, these habits and these old foods that people are used to eating. We oftentimes revert back to those things because it's what we're used to. You know what I mean? And so for me, I had a lot of things that I had to uh, learn and educate myself on about food. And so it didn't it, it didn't create a long term sustainable transformation for me. Uh huh. So w what were some of those things that, you know, that, I mean, you did you grow up in Oakland? Yeah, yeah, I was born and raised uh -huh. in Oakland, California. OK, so you're still living in the, in the bosom of the community that taught you about food. Yeah. Right. So what so what were some of the things like, you know, this like we can talk about it's easy. OK, have the vegetables instead of the meat or have. The, but what, what were sort of the cultural anchors that took the mm -hmm. most energy to to break free from? So, well, I think for me and my journey, Howard, it was a little bit different because I'm the type of person that once I find the information, it's easier for me to break loose. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like, but, but I could say as of now, just like people that I know that are transitioning, most of it has to deal with like soul food. You know, what I mean, a, a lot of people are transitioning from soul food, the, the black, black eyed peas, the greens with the pork fat in them, the meat and the chicken and the turkey. 
And, and I think those are like the cultural anchors and especially holidays. Hmm. Holidays are another example of cultural anchors to where people kind of like are stuck because they don't want to feel alienated from their family. And, you know, what I mean, like it's still things definitely in my community that, uh, you know, that are kind of like, you know, unsolved. And, and it's, it's like we're, we're used to eating these bad foods over and over and over again. And all those bad foods leave a, a energy trail behind. And I think the biggest thing is like trying to get rid of that energy trail. Mm. Say, say more. Say more. What's what does the energy trail look like? like in- OK, like I'll give you an example. Like we already know that there's pesticides in foods and we already know that there's antibiotics and there's all type of different things. Uh, prescription drugs that they may feed the animals. And I really feel like that stuff has a, a larger uh, impact than the actual meat itself. And I feel like a lot of times people are not addicted to the meat. They're usually addicted to the chemical substances that's added to the meat. Hmm. You know what I mean? And, and and if you look at it from this angle, like, you know, most people are probably getting stuff straight from Tyson or all these other places that we know are using these chemicals and stuff to keep these animals alive. And I think the biggest thing uh, for most people is it's hard to get off of those drugs. You know what I mean? And, and, and then food being a drug itself, you know? Mm-hmm. So so I, I think, uh, go ahead. Yeah. So so when, like when you cleaned up, when you got to the place where you were off all those drugs, what, what, what mm-hmm. was the difference in your energy that, that, that you felt and the people around you commented on? Oh, man. Mainly it was like, you know, when I woke up, I was working a second shift job. And one of the things that I noticed is like no matter how much sleep I got, I would always feel tired. Um, and so when I started switching my diet up, um, when I went plant based, I noticed that in the morning when I wake when I woke up, I had energy. And and a lot of people were like, man, your skin looks clearer. You know what I mean? And so like those are type of those are just like the things that you don't really notice uh-huh. that other people notice besides the, uh, you know, like on an outward appearance standpoint. But I did notice that I had way more energy. And for me, uh, and I always say this for anybody that I help nowadays, I say I don't have to convince you. The only thing I got to do is show you how it feels, you know, and, and, and I think when you show people how it feels, it gives them a, their own internal perspective on what the benefits are. Yeah, it's like this idea, like wh- whatever I'm doing, whatever I'm feeling is like baseline. It's normal. I'm used to it. And yeah. If like, you know, I felt like if you could live for a day in my body or 10 minutes, like you would see the difference. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's it. It's, it's you know, um, that, that that's where it comes down to, like, you know, cleansing out the channels and detoxing the body and, you know, all that stuff, because, you know, our intestines are our second immune system. So if, if we have all these think about it, the average person probably has never done it in te- a colon detox. And so that means that we probably got 20 to 30 years of, of matter inside of our intestines and it, it has to leave some sort of trail or some sort of trace. Hmm. Well, you know? I ju- yeah, I just finished a seven day water fast and not not to get too graphic, but uh, that was three days ago. Today I eliminated for the first time and boy, that stuff looked interesting. Yeah, well, definitely. Well, actually, uh, the interesting thing is I'm on day four of a water fast right now. Oh, my so, gosh. <laughs> yeah, I'm on, I'm on day four. So I'm going to go seven days as well. So that's pretty interesting. And uh, I'm also doing a colon cleanse at the same time. So okay. I'm taking like this MAG-07 and I'm doing a colon cleanse. And you're, you're, you're absolutely right. It's different. It allows you to develop a different relationship with your body. And uh, some, some thing that just happened was I just met my grandfather after 36 years. And my grandfather is actually a naturopathic doctor. He's an herbalist. He's all these different things that I'm studying to become. And the one thing that he enlightened me on, he was like, uh, my grandpa's 83. And he was like, I told him about my protocol, what I'm going to do, because I had I had got an abscess. And, you know, I had some cracked feelings and stuff like that in my mouth. And I'm working on restoring my enamel on my teeth. Mm -hmm. And um, he told me he was like, you know what? He was like, try it out and then let me know how it goes. And so, you know, I think one of those things, too, is a lot of things that we discover about our but our body 
comes from our own trial and error. Now, if you would have asked me two years ago, would I ever do a water fast? I didn't really think it was possible. But the necessity of me having that tooth pain pushed me to a different place mentally. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, like everyone wants to know, like, what's the latest study? What's the latest truth? And we ignore that we have a body to experiment on. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, and, and, I, and I think that's the that's your biggest uh, ground of figuring out what's going to what, what you know, you know, what I mean, like you, you know, based off of what you do. You know, and, and, and the thing with me and, you know, different people are in different realms. So don't don't think I'm recommending somebody that's on medication to start experimenting. However, you know, at the end of the day, you got choices to make. You know, what I mean, you could choose the medication or you could choose something else. And that's that's a choice that we have as humans. You know, what I mean, we can choose which path we go down. Yeah. So I hope you don't mind me asking, but I'm really curious about you just met your grandfather for the first time after 30 years. Yeah, is, yeah, that, it sounds that like there's a story there. Oh, that 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 will I, I'm gonna tell you a little bit, but that's gonna be a that will be a whole nother interview because I well, the thing is, I met my grandpa grandfather and I talked to him for three hours, and in three hours I found out so much about him that was really really, uh, you know, into, he's a very interesting guy. Um, he studied medicine in uh, China. He studied medicine in Japan. He studied in India. Um, you know, it's so much stuff that I learned about him, man. Like, you know, he was impressed with my knowledge on nutrition. And, you know, and I told him, I was like, yeah, you know, uh, you know how they say the saying the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Uh -huh. It's interesting that I could meet my grandfather after 36 years. And then all of a sudden we, we have, we have similar interests, uh -huh. you know what I mean? Like, and, and so uh, you know, when I met him, I met. I also met my dad's side of the family for the first time uh, in 36 years. So that was a whole another interesting piece. Oh my God. And I, I, I could tell you one thing, Howard. That was probably the greatest time of my life. You know what I mean? Like that. That as a as a man, that was probably one of the greatest memories that I'll never forget. You know, and my and my grandpa, he was saying, he was like, you know, he was like, I'm glad you reached out to me. And I, I can tell you the story on that. So. So basically, my my aunt, who I was still in contact with, my my grandma, uh, which is my dad's mother, she died of colon cancer in 1999. Um, and 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 I remember my grandma, but I don't really remember her. I remember talking to her a few times, but you know how you have those vivid memories of your grandma. Yeah. I didn't have those, but I but my aunt, my aunt Eula, um, she would always keep in contact with my dad. And so she, we, we started like recently communicating like about maybe five or six years ago. And so I would always talk to her on the phone. And then I, I found out that my family was having a family reunion. And so, um, so my family was having a family reunion and last year I missed it. And so this year I was like, I'm not going to miss it. And so I went out there and it was kind of, it was, it was a definitely an emotional point in my life. Uh, I probably cried the most that I've ever cried as an adult, you know, because and it was more tears of joy, mm -hmm. you know, what I mean, because like meeting my family, seeing how great they were, seeing how accomplished they were, seeing all the things that they were about, you know, what I mean, like it just made me feel like, wow, like this is a whole nother chapter of my life that I didn't know anything about. And the craziest thing is in that same weekend, I met my grandfather for the first time. You know, and when I first met him, I, I immediately cried. Like, I cried. You know what I mean? And, and, and it was just like, man, you know, because for years and years, I was telling people that my grandpa was dead, you know? And so to is, finally so is, meet is, my grandpa. Is that what you thought, uh, or he just wasn't part of your yeah, life? Yeah, I, I, I didn't know, because, you know, like, the thing is, my, my dad didn't do a good job of relaying history. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so for years, I did think that, because I thought my grandpa, I thought my grandmother, I knew my grandmother was dead. So I just thought my grandpa was dead, too, because there was never any mention of them. Uh -huh. uh, and so my but luckily, my aunt Eula had always kept in contact. So she knew where she knew, you know, they always spoke every once in a while or whatever. Um, and so I just asked her out the blue one day and I was like, hey, is my grandpa still alive? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, for real? And so I was like, hey, give me his can I can you give me his number? And so she was like, give me a day or so and I'll find his number for you. 
Uh-huh. Um, and so and so she found, gave me two numbers and I called them up and I was like, hey, you know, I was like, is this, uh, you know, I called my grandpa. I was like, hey, are you such and such? Uh, he was like, I was like, are you Herman Maiden? He was like, yeah. And so I was like, um, I think I might be your grandson. And I told him who my dad was. And he was like, I think you're right. And, you know, right there, that was an emotional moment for me right there. Because I was like, man, like after all these years, I thought my grandpa was dead. My grandpa is actually alive. And so I told him, I was like, hey, I'm going to be coming out to Louisiana to come see you. Um, and I think we should meet up. And he was like, yeah, let's let's do it. Uh, and so I went out there and uh, I saw him the one day of the family reunion. And then the next day on Sunday, I went to go see him. And I just found out all this amazing stuff about him. It, it was just it was just like it, it was overwhelming how much. Yeah, uh, you just like all the stuff that he's done and all the stuff that he's accomplished. And so, you know, um, and, he, and he does it, you know, he's just been doing his thing. He's been riding the wave, doing his thing on his own. And I, I, I aspire to be just like him. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's, it sounds like without consciously trying, you are. Yeah, definitely. definitely wow. I definitely. mean, I'm just I mean, the, the sense of like identity that must come with that. Oh, like. <clears throat> I understand myself better from from seeing myself in this historical context. Well, yeah. Well, and the one thing, too, is like uh, one of the one of the things like I have one of my clients and she, they always call me like a unicorn. They're like, you're the black unicorn. <laughs> and, and, and then uh, because, you know, like all the stuff that I'm into, I'm into healing, I'm into natural health, I'm into exercise, fitness, you know, nutrition, cooking, chefing, just the different all the stuff that my my energy has brought me to. Um, that's what she called me. And then she heard that I, I told her the story of me meeting my grandpa. And she was like, the tale of the two, she was like, two black unicorns unite. <laughs> and, 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 and like, and like, I was like, that's true. You know what I mean? And so it, it does, it allows me to understand me more. You know what I mean? Because now I know like, whoa, like there's another person on this planet that's doing that's done everything that I want to do. And and this is the biggest thing, Howard. I get to learn from them. You mm. know, like like that's the that's so huge. It, it's just it blows me away every time I think about it. Right. And you know? probably, you know, imagine. So he, he grew up. Your family grew, was uh, from Louisiana. Yeah. Originally. Whereabouts? Uh, Shreveport. Oh, you know, Josh Lajani. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. No, he's in Shriver, right? Shri- oh. Shreve. Okay, Shreveport. I says other folks. Uh, my business partner Josh is from, uh, you know, the Bayou. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. Um, but you know, if you talk about like you know the soul food, the first two things you oh, mentioned man. were were black eyed peas and greens. But yeah. like before soul food, like that was health food, right? You're, yeah, definitely, you're, definitely. Your your family probably has connections to when traditional rural black food was like the, among the healthiest you could get right and that's the thing the, the the craziest part about it is that my family actually owned farmland so they had you know upwards to 100 acres of land in a period of time and one of the stories that i always hear about my family is that uh they used to always call it going out into the country and so they used to go out into the country and the thing was that they always had to work they had to work the land because you know you have to pick pick crops and weed and do all this type of stuff so you are absolutely right and that's why i kind of i kind of i don't look at soul food as bad but i think when we get into i think when we got into the city life you know what i mean and, and we got disconnected from the food i think that's what created those bad things because on both sides of my family on my mom's side and on my dad's side my my mom's side was from Belzoni, mississippi and and I remember talking to my uh, my my great uncle Fred and I was asking him because I was like, I was like, Uncle Fred, I was like, y'all didn't eat that much meat when you were younger. And he was like, no, <laughs> he was like, we didn't eat that much meat when we were younger. He was like, we mostly ate fruits and vegetables and grains and stuff. And, and I was like, oh, OK, it makes sense, because he was like, when, when we were sick, my grandma would, or my mom would go out into the yard and pick some stuff and tell us to and boil a tea and tell us to drink it, hmm. you know? So in actuality, you know, that those foods were 
amongst some of the healthiest things you could get because they were fresh off the farm. They were readily available with vitamins and nutrients. And, it, it, you know, it was just that point in time where I think we come into the microwave era where food started to change. And then you get more packaged foods, you get more chemical processed foods and things like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, so we're in working with people from all different backgrounds and cultures. The commonality is two generations ago, if we ask our grandparents what they grew up on, they were eating healthy unless yeah. they were like, you know, rich people from New York City. Right. Definitely. Right. Like, yep, that's the truth. Yeah. So, so you um, you did this transformation. You you lost the fifty pounds once, regained it the second time. What happened? What was well, so this, well, this was the thing. Um, one of the things that happened during that process. So I was when I started off on my transformation, I was about forty four percent body fat, and, and and right now I'm at about nineteen uh, percent body fat. Uh -huh. um, and, and and that was the biggest thing. The biggest thing I was just like ah. Uh, I was I, I have formed an artist collective during that time. I moved back to California. So I lived in Wisconsin for 10 years um, and I was eating bar food, uh, cheese. You got to eat know, cheese all, in Wisconsin. All the, yeah, all the stuff that you do, burgers from the bar and all the rest of that stuff, drinking beer. And when I got back out here, I had I had switched to like a vegan diet, but I was a junk food vegan. You know uh -huh. what I mean? And so and so I was still eating like the processed stuff because it said vegan. I was still eating it. And what happened was I was in the midst of this artist collective called The Hive. And um, I was devoting a lot of energy out. And I was big at that time. I, I got myself back up to like 230. And this last time I was just like, you know what? I was like, I'm tired of this. You know what I mean? Like I'm tired of yo-yoing with my weight. I'm tired of feeling like this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so... At that point in time, I decided to make a transition. I started working out. I started eating properly. And, and during that time, that was the last time that I lost the weight. And I was able to keep it off at that point in time. Hmm. So tell me, what, what, what were you up to in the hive? Like, what was what was meaningful to you about that? And what were you doing? Well, the, the, this is the thing. Like, you know, for me, I've always been into, like, the arts. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Like, I've always been into, like, music creation, and I, I was a DJ at one point in time. I saw that um, on your, one of your Facebook pages is D DJ Rec Vegan. Rec. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so you know, I was always into, like, music and stuff like that. I even created a couple songs, and, you know, so I've always been into, like, uh, the arts. I draw, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's a whole bunch of host of things that I do, but um, I, I came up with a couple of friends and I was like hey let's find a way to get paid off of what we love to do because I you know I have been reading books and it's a quote that always stuck with me and it says if you do what it is you love to do you never have to work a day in your life right and 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 that kind of inspired me that inspired me to actually uh go on and try to live that and so you know um what happened was I was about 20 I was about 27, 28, and, and, my, and my son was about to be born. You know, so when I moved back, when I moved back from uh, Wisconsin, I found out that me and my fiance at the time were pregnant. And uh, what happened with that was my son was on his way. So, I, you know, I had to think of some ways to support. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, let's do this. So we did, we did a whole bunch of stuff. We had our own farm. We had a 70 by 40 plot of land. And we were farming on it, and it was it was a, uh, we worked with another group called um, Spiral Gardens, and Spiral Gardens actually taught us how to grow food. You know what I mean? So what we would do is we would just go over there, and and we uh, we would just help them with their land. Uh -huh. and now, they is this, is this in, in uh, Oakland City Limits? Yeah, yeah. So that's it. That was in Berkeley, okay, uh, in South Berkeley. Uh -huh. um, and so and so what we would do is we would connect with them and. They would show us stuff, and basically, we had a lot of success. But the one thing that it taught me was it taught me that you have to have a common vision. You know what I mean? Like, and, and if if you bring people together and you don't have a common vision, it's harder to keep things together. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was a, that, I, I I love that experience because it taught me a lot about myself, and it was it was interesting because it was some magical stuff that was happening there. Like you know, like I was I was networking i was bringing connections through we were 
you know, we were moving and shaking, and we actually had an event that we did called Rock and Soul. And in, in that event, we actually were profitable, which is crazy for our first event. Um, and we have we have brought a bunch of like uh, people that were like rock artists and soul artists together. We rented out a venue in downtown Oakland and it was pretty cool. Everybody enjoyed it. But, you know, that was a chapter of my life where I learned about myself and organization and dealing with people and stuff like that. So, yeah, that, that was pretty much the high. Gotcha. Um, so you ha you just opened a gym, right? Like three a couple months ago. Yeah, yeah. So uh, May 15th was my mm. soft launch. Uh, mm. My grand opening was June 15th. Gotcha. So, so I'm, I'm, yeah, go ahead. ahead. As I was saying, so I'm approaching roughly about three, three months, go one on three. Gotcha. Yeah. So, yeah, so I, I, I come from a family of artists, like my wife okay. and both of my kids, I consider like artists. I don't really consider yeah. myself one in the same way. And I know right. that whatever they're doing, they're doing art. And I'm curious right. how plant-based fitness is, is, is art for you? Well, th this is the thing. Um, th the way it's art for me is because I, when you think about art, art involves a transformation, right? And it, it involves evolution. Like I'll give you an example, going from a sketch to a finished piece. That, that's, that's evolution. You know what I mean? And, and it's also a transformation. It's like you're taking something out of, you, out of the ether and you're putting it into your mind and then you're putting it to paper and then you're creating a finished product. Uh -huh. and, and, and the way it correlates is because fitness is like that too as well. And the way fitness is like that is because oftentimes people can't pre, they can't see their transformation before it happens. So at the end of the day, the, the, what, I'm, what I'm telling people or what I'm selling people on is an idea because it's mm -hmm. not tangible. You know what I mean? It's the idea that if you perform this, 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 and this, that you will get this result. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, and, and, so, and, it's, and if you're a sketch artist, you've done it a hundred times. You you have confidence. But if you're if you're it, trying to draw your the art of your own life, you have all you have is all somebody has is you and your word. Right. Exactly. And, and so and so the thing about that is is the way it, it correlates is because now. I've had a couple people in my in the beginning of my, you know, before I even had my own business, I had the ability to transform a couple people. And these people, I've actually, you know, knocked like 40 plus pounds off of them. And, you know, that's like the size of a little baby, you know. And, and so once I did that to a couple of people, I was like, oh, I was like, OK, I got the formula now on how to do it. And not only just like knocking it off of them, we're talking about keeping it off of them because it's, it's easy to I always say it's easy to lose weight, but it's hard to keep it off. Uh -huh. You know, and so I had these people that I l helped lose a little bit of weight and they kept it off. And so then I was like, OK, what I'm doing is working. And so now I'm at the point right now, Howard, where anybody that comes to me, as long as they're serious I, I'm almost sure that I can get them results. You know what I mean? Like, and, and, and that's the thing. It's, it's more of a partnership. The way I approach fitness is through a partnership. It's a 50-50 partnership. I do my part and you do your part. And through both of us both doing our part, we get amazing results. So do people come to you and you go, you know what? They're not serious. Like I can tell. Well, well and I do have those people and, and I have to have a way of weeding those people out. And the one thing that I do is I just refer people to the people that might be best for them. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't want to be like, oh, no, you ain't serious. So I can't mess with you. But I, I know the type of client that I work the best with. You know what I mean? Like and, and that's the, that's one of the things, too, as you evolve uh, in life is that you understand who you work well with. And, and it's like you don't try to fit, uh, you know, uh, a square into a circle. You know what I mean? Like yeah. and, 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 and a lot of people receive strife because they get people that are not right for them. It's kind of like, for example, uh, if I'm not a if I'm not a bodybuilding trainer, I'm not going to try to take on a bodybuilding client. You know what I mean? Because that's not my scope of practice It's not my area of expertise. And so I would do better. And it will be a better experience for the customer if I gave them to a person that will be fit for them. 
You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And, yeah, but there's and, there's that. There's like, okay, there's different flavors, but there's also right. like someone comes to you and they say, I really want to do this. And you can see in their eyes, you can hear, or you can intuit something like, no, this person's not serious. Right. Right. Well, look, yeah. I'm Go curious what you, I mean, because I, you know, I face the same thing. I'm curious what you see or, or well, can, can you articulate, like, what, what are the signals that someone's not ready? Well, I think this, the, one of the signals is like language. You know what I mean? Like, the, the one thing I notice is that all of the people that I dealt with are, that are serious, you don't have to convince them of anything. You know what I mean? Like, and, and I think when you have to convince somebody of something, it shows that they that they're not at a certain phase of uh, of readiness for change. You know how they got like ser they got several phases of readiness for change. They got like pre contemplation, contemplation, um, action, and and then you know like I, I, it's a couple other ones that I'm missing. But you know, yeah. usually when people show up, they're usually in an action phase because it takes a lot for somebody to say, "Hey, I got a problem." And I need a solution. Uh -huh. um, and, and for me, you, and, and I'm not saying I'm perfect because I, I've ran across those people that I found out a month later that they weren't serious about what they said that they really wanted to do. And I had to find a way to, uh, you know, find that person, the right person. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and, and I think that's the biggest thing, too, is just like being able to uh, being able to pass. You know what I mean? Like, that's a that's a big, right. that's like a big thing. It's not, you know, it's not it's not it's not a blow to your ego to say no. This, this uh -uh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, because 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 the reason why it's not a blow to my ego is because I already know that uh, you know how it is when you reach a certain I, I like I like always using comparing uh, martial art masters. OK. You know, what I mean, like like when you go into a, 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 a dojo you're prepared to do whatever the, the Sifu is telling you to do. Like, you're not going to try to customize a plan and be like, okay, well, hey, hey guess what, Sifu? This is what I'm, I'm going to do, and this is what you're going to do. You know what I mean? Because the Sifu is already, he, he's already reached that level to where the formula that he's done, he's perfected it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah, so... It's, a, it's, it's also that you're, you have to give something up in order to get something. And one of the easiest thing, one of the, you know, it's easy for someone to give you money. It's much yeah. harder for someone to, you know, let their ego be quiet. Right. Well, and, and then I think too, one of the things that you learn about it is you, you understand how all money isn't good money. But because, because, because when, when, one thing I learned is that when you're in the people business, you have to be mindful of of the energy that you accept. You know what I mean? Because because one of the biggest things is that, you know, you got this person and they're going to pay you a load of money and you're like, oh, yes, that would be so nice. And then when they get when they when you get it, you realize that they're not the type of person that you enjoy working with. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and, and we go back to that quote again. And it says, if you do what it is you love to do, you never have to work a day in your life. And so then we have to also be mindful of reading energy in the beginning. You know what I mean? Like, hey, if it feels good, usually it is good. And mm -hmm. if it doesn't feel good in the beginning, then we have to be, as pr practitioners, we have to be able to take a step back and be like, okay, wait, how, how am I entering this? You know what I mean? Like, am I entering it because I really feel like I can help this person? Or am I entering it from a state of my ego? Right. You know what I mean? Because 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 I can't turn this this thing down. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, because, well, if I take this person's money that I'm not really sure of, that'll keep me afloat and I'll be able to relax and do more. And it becomes a, a question of means and ends. Right. Exactly. And, and, and then what happens when you focus on means and ends is you get away from the passion. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and the thing is, one thing I learned about even training people and dealing with people and being in the people business is that I, I want to enjoy working with the people that I work with. And so if I don't if I don't feel like I'll enjoy working with that person, I won't take their money. And it's, it's not it's not even like, you know, it's more of like a thing like, hey, you know, I, I think that this person might be a better fit for you, but it doesn't fit with my program. And I've had people like, you know, come to me. I have, I've had people say, you know what? 
I haven't came to you, Gary, because I'm I'm not ready yet. Mm-hmm. And I re- and I respect that. You know what I mean? Because like you know, for me, I'm in the results business, and so a lot of the a lot of the things that I do are based off of results. And sometimes uh, results don't always equal people's feelings feeling well. You know what I mean? Because like sometimes you gotta tell people stuff that they that they need to hear and not what they want to hear. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're changing people's lives. And when you're changing a person's life, it, it requires a certain level of, uh, of sternness, you know what I mean? And, 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 I, and I think we live in a society right now where a lot of people, uh, are used to the people not telling them the truth. You know, yeah, I, mean? well, I, so, I, I see this a lot on Facebook groups that are supposedly dedicated to growth and transformation and an achievement that people yeah. go there looking for pity. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I think that's the thing, like one of the things for me and it doesn't fit with everybody, but I've always respected the people that told me the truth. You know, what I mean, like they told me what I needed to hear versus what I wanted to hear. And I think you hear it all the time, like celebrities they make a bunch of money and they said they have a bunch of yes men around them mm. and, and 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 that's what it's comparable to it's comparable to having a bunch of yes men around you you know people yes men and women's people that just say agree with everything you say and they're like oh yeah yeah you know that's okay it was it was that person's fault you know what i mean and, yeah. it, and it pulls you away from taking ownership of yourself yeah well it reminds me a little bit of you know the book uh, living with a seal uh, oh, I never read that. Oh, this is uh, Jesse Itzler, who's this, you know, fabulously wealthy entrepreneur. I think he owns the Falcons and he was like his wife is the founder of Spanx. And he felt uh-huh. like, OK, he's incredibly successful. He's getting soft. So he invited uh, Navy SEAL David Goggins to live in his house mm-hmm. for a month. And the only deal David Goggins made was you do everything I say. Wow. Changed his life. So, yeah, like. You know, yeah. how, how many pull ups am I going to do in the snow at three in the morning? OK, right. like, like, wait, you know, like, no, we we didn't discuss this. It says, yes, we did. Yeah, it was one rule. What? Well, yeah. And, 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 I, and I think that's the biggest thing, too, is like, you know, one thing that I always respect about when I go in to learn from other teachers is I is I always respect that I'm there to learn. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like I'm, I'm, I'm all, I come in like a student. A student is ready. You've read the syllabus. You know, you know, you know who the teacher is because you probably researched them before you got to them. You know what I mean? And, and, and I think just coming in with an open mind and one of the hardest things, and I think this may be ego based, too, is coming in with a blank slate. You know what I mean? Like like forgetting what you think, you know, and, and allowing someone to uh, teach you the philosophy. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and I. And I think what that's one of the biggest things, though, the, the people in my experience that have gotten the greatest results are the people that came in with a blank piece of paper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I find that for myself, like while I'm a, uh, you know, a, a domain expert, I'm never an mm-hmm. expert on the person that I'm helping. So that, right. like, for me to be a, like the way I get better as a coach is to yeah. be a blank slate for each person, like what motivates you? Yeah. What are the, what are your particular stumbling blocks? What's the language that's going to reach you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think also, too, that takes time. You know, what I mean, because in the beginning of a new relationship, everybody won't always reveal everything that you need to know. Mm. And so so you also have to do a little bit of discovery. You know, what I mean, you have to discover like, OK, hey, uh, what is this that motivates people? And, and that that brings me to another thing, too. Like even in my training, I focus a lot on mindset. You know what I mean? Because I always say this, in order for you to have a new body, you need a new mind. Mm. Um, and, 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 and you cannot have an old body, you cannot have a new body with an old mind because what will happen is the way programming works is that your body will automatically revert back to the body that you have with the, with the new mind or with the old mind. And, and, and I've seen this in action because I've helped people, I've helped a few people uh, I'm not going to say any names, lose 30 pounds in six weeks. And, and you know, th- some of those people painting me, painted a picture of me that was like, you would have thought they were, you, they were dealing with a monster. And, and one of the things that I understood was I understood, I had to humble myself and I was like, you know what, Gary, it's not about you. 
You know what I mean? Like that's that own person's personal journey. That's that own person's journey on that transformation. And the, what you're seeing had nothing to do with you. You know what I mean? You accomplished, you did what you were supposed to do. Yeah. You know? So what's, what's the biggest mindset shift or the one, the most important one that you think people need to make? Because if they're coming in with their 260 pound, 44 percent body fat body based on their mind, you know, you can't just say, OK, change your mindset. Like what's mm -hmm. what's one thing or a couple of things that you think are key? Well, I think uh, when I think about the key things, um, it's definitely uh, not beating yourself down. Uh, and so in, in the environment that I'm in right now, as far as my gym, I don't I don't uh, tolerate any negative self-talk. Hmm. So when people say I'm weak or I'm fat or I'm not strong or I can't or I don't I don't tolerate that because I already know whenever you say the word I can't, it sends off a negative impulse through your body. And so you're programming yourself through affirmations of what you can and can't do. You know what I mean? And so whenever I hear people uh, doing that, I usually create something that they don't want to do. So like uh, one of the things I create is burpees. So, you know, I would have people to be like, oh, look at my legs. I'm so fat. I'm so weak. And what happens is, is it's just a, a, a little nudge of programming. And mm. the way I do it is because every time I hear them say it, I'm like, OK, you, you owe me 50 burpees. And, and burpees are the thing that if you do them, you get in really good physical condition, but nobody wants to do them. You know what I mean? And so you have to make the I have to make the result of you talking bad about yourself, something that you don't want to do. So therefore, you you know that, hey, at least in here, you're not going to talk bad about yourself. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And, and then that's one mindset thing, too, is I always and I, I learned that I think I was uh, listening to uh, uh, Tony Robbins. Mm -hmm. and, and he was talking about negative self-talk and he said try this out he was like um if you ever have a negative thought about yourself you cannot end on a negative you got to reverse that with a positive and and so i you know i kind of been following that and and it's it's helped it's helped a lot of people you know what i mean like just them knowing that when they come to my environment that's why i have this on my shirt mm -hmm. Can you see that? Positive vibes only. Yeah. And, nice. and, and I, I always try to figure out ways to subliminally uh, get people to think about stuff that they need to think about. You know what I mean? Like, and, and, and your, your energy attracts so much to you. So if, if, if we're thinking about mindset, if, I have, if, if you come in here and you're talking negative to yourself all the time, all the time, I don't see how you're going to get many results and I don't see how you're even going to last long doing what you're doing. Because um, I remember one time when I was doing some extensive training and um, it was these stairs over by the lake. They're called the Cascade Stairs. And it's like about maybe about eight or nine flights of stairs. Uh -huh. And I would always tell myself, I was like, I hate these stairs. And and they was always they would always kill me every time. And then, you know what I told myself? I was like, you know what? I was like, I'm not going to tell myself I hate these stairs because if I anything you hate, you won't want to do. Sure. And so I was like, you know what? I love these stairs. And the moment that I told myself I love those stairs, the stairs got easier. The same uh -huh. thing with laundry, the same thing with washing dishes, the same thing with all the stuff, you know. And so so I'm, I'm really big on mindset. That's one of the tips. Um, number two is just like the, the self-development. You know what I mean? Like I send my clients uh, speeches about health. I send my clients speeches about, like you know, uh, affirmations. You know what I mean? Like those are all things that help people power themselves through. Um, but because it's always going to be a time where you feel like quitting something. And, and usually at that time where you feel like quitting is where your breakthrough is about to happen. And, 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 I, and I've noticed that just time and time again in myself. So. Uh, you know, another mindset tip is like mind affirmations and how you start your morning off. You know, it was a point in time where I was having people do like miracle morning, which is uh, where you wake up, you do silence, you do uh, affirmations, you do visualizations, you do exercise, you do writing and then you do reading. And that could take 25 minutes. But that's a mindset tip right there because it's going to automatically prepare you for your day.
Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm on your gym's uh, Facebook page and you've, it says real strength, real power, real movement. What, yeah. what, do, what do you mean by each of those? So so um, one of the things that I thought about was I, I used to work at the YMCA for about three years. Uh -huh. And um, it was even through my own personal experience. Um, I remember being able to lift 300 pounds. And that, that was a that was an anomaly for me at that point in time. I was like, wow, I could bench press 315. But the moment that I stopped doing it, I lost the ability to be able to best bench press 315. And uh, one of the things that I did that was differently with my own training is I started working with my own body weight. And I look at it like this. If you could if you can hop on a lat pull down machine and you can lift all of the stacks of weights, right? Mm -hmm. But you but you hop up on a pull up bar and your body that weighs less than that, that whole stack is probably like about 300 pounds, but your body weighs less than that and you cannot lift your whole body up. That's not real strength. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so, and so by me training people to work with their own body, I, I always say it like this. Gymnasts are the ultimate athlete. They're flexible and they're strong. And, 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 and I think once you become flexible, whenever you're not flexible, it means that you're weak in a certain area. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because most of the people that I know that are really, really strong, they're flexible as well. Um, and so that's where the real strength comes in. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and the real, the real movement is just like, you know, getting back to the, the, like how babies move, you know what I mean? Like, like I remember one time I was giving my son a bath, right. And he was in the tub and he had his legs crossed. Right. Mm -hmm. And he, he went like this and stretched his arms out and dived his head down in the water and he was <laughs> flat. And, and I, and I, and I was looking at myself as, as a grown man and I was like, I was like, I would love to be able to do that. Sure. You know what I'm saying? And uh -huh. so like, and, and for me, what happened is like, you know, as a guy, we don't really focus on flexibility. You know what I mean? It's, it's rare that we do. And so I feel like I, I was cheated because I never really, I cheated myself because I never really took the time to focus on flexibility. I thought that was for the ladies. And right. Well, if we, if we go to the gym, we bulk up. We want to be able to walk around like we can barely clap our hands. Right. Well, and that's the thing, too. When, when I was doing all that bench pressing, I had shoulder and joint issues. I couldn't even go like this to touch my back. Mm. And so and so that's kind of what crafted that real that real movement, you know, what I mean, or that uh -huh. real strength. Gotcha. Uh, and then and then the real power is, is I look at it like this. If you could do a handstand and you can walk with a handstand, that's real power to me. You know what I mean? And so uh, I, I've had people that couldn't do handstands, that never did a handstand in their life, be able to at least hold a wall assisted handstand. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's to me, that's real power. Gotcha. You know, and so it's kind of like more of the thing that you've seen was more of the exercise philosophy. Uh huh. Gotcha. Yeah. So I'm imagining having talked to you and understanding your views on energy and transformation, that those are also metaphors for life. Yeah, well, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all you know, we always transform. You know, we get a new set of cells every seven years. We get new bone structure. You know, what I mean, like we, we go through different events in our life. Right. All of our life is is similar to exercise. Right. So you know what, I mean, it's, so what, what do you look what are people looking for? What do you want to give people around real strength, real power, real movement that extends beyond the gym? Well, I, I, the one thing I can say is that um, real strength could be you being able to forgive someone. You know what I mean? Like, like, mm. like to me, uh, and somebody told me this today, I was in the barbershop and we were having a talk and, and, and I was telling them about, you know, repairing their relationship with my father. And one of the things that the biggest thing that I did and I did it for myself and I didn't do it for anybody else was I forgave my father for for everything. You know what I mean? And it wasn't like my dad wasn't like a bad guy or anything like that, but you know what I mean? Like when you're younger and you if your dad isn't present, you're like, oh, you know, forget him. 
you know, like, and, and, and the biggest thing that I did was I forgive, I forgave him. And that, that's a translation for real power mm. because when you can forgive somebody, you actually take your power back, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and as far as like the real strength in life is in life, you are always going to face obstacles, you know what I mean? And, and your, your real, oh, sorry about that, the real power. Um, your, I look at your real power is your resilience. You know what I mean? It's your ability to get knocked down and get back up. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like when life throws something at you and it does knock you down because it will, how do you respond to it? Do you retreat or do you, or do you go within yourself and you're like, Hey, I need to get back up. Let me get back up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and when you think about the real movement aspect is that, I just in my experience, uh, you know, and, and if I could tell you that this whole instance of me having a gym was kind of like a storybook, it, it really was, you know, what I mean, because all the stuff happened because me being able to move in the right time and being in the right place, because when I first applied for this place, I didn't even think I was going to get it. I was like, oh, you know, my credit ain't the best, um, you know, like I, I was coming up with all these obstacles on on why I couldn't do it but the guess the only thing that I did that was the biggest thing was I kept my movement going forward you know what I mean like 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 I kept I kept putting myself in the right position yeah and and every time I put myself in the right position I got a reward uh -huh. and 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 the the one time you know because I was at another gym before and I had to I had to allow myself to see the bigger picture and be like okay hey this is your time to get out of that cocoon and this is your time to spread your wings and so movement is a is a is a metaphor for life because we only have short windows of opportunity you know what i mean like you ever see that like, like uh the time if you're running track you could you could lose a race by what a nose uh -huh. you know what i mean and so if you are in the proper movement and the proper alignment then you are always in the place where you need to be. Mm -hmm. And the and the the caterpillar doesn't have to figure this out. No, right? humans humans need real movement so we can figure out. Like yeah, this yep. is like I can hear a lot of people like in my own mind. It's like many times in the past, I was like, who am I to dot dot dot? Right. Uh, who am I to become a butterfly? Right. Exactly. And, mm -hmm. and, I, and I think, too, when you when you have that thought process, you're not stepping into the, the true abundance. You know, what I mean, like and, and, and I feel like, you know, especially with all the stuff going on around the planet, I'm still a firm believer that there is more abundance than there is strife. Hmm. You know, what I mean, and, and, and I think it's all about what you choose to uh, wire your signals to. You know what I mean? Because like uh -huh. if, if you if you read the newspaper every day and you watch the news on TV, if you if you pay attention to all those things, it, it'll definitely bog you down. But if you focus on doing the best that you could do in all your human interactions, I feel like that's where you activate your true power. Right on. Um, so before we let you, we let you go, um, you mentioned like you know getting the gym, not having great credit. I just saw on Facebook a really beautiful post in which you talked about repaying your Kiva loan and thanking everyone who supported you. Can you talk a little bit about what Kiva is and how it helped you? Yeah, so so Kiva helped me out when I had a juice bar idea. I had a juice bar idea and the idea for the juice bar was to in the gym that I was in, uh, it was for me to open up a juice bar inside that gym. Um, one thing I, I got a loan for ten thousand dollars. And uh, the one thing I realized that a juice bar definitely cost more than ten thousand uh -huh. dollars. And so and so I, I, I bought like a juicer. I bought all, all I got the inspector to come out. I did all this stuff. And then I was like, my money was running dry. So I was like, uh oh, you know, what I mean, like um, that that it didn't go as planned, but it was uh -huh. a good learning lesson. And what I did was I, I still made sure that I repay every bit of my loan. And I did it. It was like a crowdfunding thing to where. So first thing you got to do is you got to do seeding and with uh, seeding, you find people that support you. So basically people that say, hey, I'm going to donate twenty five dollars to Gary because I believe in him. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and then once you do the seed money, you got to get 16 seeders. And then you got to do, um, I think after that, you go into the market where everybody could donate to you. Uh -huh. And the craziest thing was the loan actually got funded. It was supposed to go for, I think, almost two months. And it got funded in three weeks. And, and, and that was that was crazy. You know what I mean? Like that, that was just crazy. And, and the reason why I like to keep a loan is because it's definitely not a predatory loan. Yeah. Um, it, it's a zero interest loan for up to ten thousand dollars. So if you have a business that that you can that can get you off the ground with ten thousand dollars, then that's definitely a good way to go. And it helped me out a lot. Uh -huh. um, and, and, and yet so, you say like you didn't it didn't like succeed, but you still managed to repay it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. It, it didn't succeed, but I still managed to replay it because I, I, I definitely had a, a sense of not letting the people that supported me down. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and, and, and for me, and that's why I made that post. I was like, hey, you know, just let you know, you know, if I do need your help again and I do decide to do something bigger, you know what I mean? Like, hey, my credit is good with you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, yeah. and, and I put that out there because I just wanted to let people know, like, I'm aware that you supported me. And I, I appreciate that with the utmost, you know what I mean? Because who it, it's kind of like those thoughts that you say, like, sometimes you, you, you do got to humble yourself and you be like, wow, people actually believe in what I'm doing. And, 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 I, and one of the most powerful things that I always say is that the way we tap into our true human power is when we start to believe in people. You know what I mean? Like, and, and I, always, I tell my son that I was like, I believe in you. And, and, I, and, and it may not mean nothing to him now, but I know when he gets older, he's going to look, he's going to remember that. You know what I mean? And, and, and I think, you know, as far as like whenever we're trying to do something, those people that support us and those people that believe in us, they mean a lot to us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, and so I, I, yeah, it sounds like the whole the whole story of, of your journey has been creating this environment where people can build the muscle of believing in themselves. Yeah. That's it. Right. So why that, would you believe in someone who didn't believe in themselves? It does. You can't do it. You know, it, it doesn't work. And I, and I think that's the biggest thing, too, is just like for me, my, my goal is not to have a client for three and four years. Uh -huh. You know, what I mean, my, my, my goal is for me to give you something that's going to last you a lifetime. You know, what I mean, and, and, and I don't even want any credit for it, because at the end of the day, you did the hard work. If you happen to appreciate me for it, I'm thankful and I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, my goal, like I said, is to uh, help people transform. And I, and I just, I, for me, Howard, I enjoy seeing people in good health. You know what I mean? And, and, it, and it all, it, it just comes from my heart. You know what I mean? It's who I am. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I could talk about, I could talk about crying and all the rest of that stuff. And it's just because who I am, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm definitely, I, my emotions are a superpower to me. Yeah, you know, what I, mean? no, but I was I was laughing because when you said that, like, I enjoy seeing people in good health. I understand you. You mean it in a very deep, profound way. But I just you know, if I just hear it in a totally superficial way, like, no, I want to be around like sick people like right. they, they, like there's like the aesthetics of healthy yeah. people. It's just it's beautiful. It's sexy. It's live. It's yeah, it's energizing. It's the arts. Right. It's it's, it's, yeah. it's sharing our expression. It's everything that you want. You know what I mean? Because healthy people are loving people. Healthy mm -hmm. people are kind people. You know what I mean? Because because then you got to talk about this, too, because your health is more of it's not just one area. You know what I mean? You're you're healthy in your spirit. Yeah. You're healthy in your in your mind. You're healthy in your body. So we just talk about that triangle, that trifecta. Once you get healthy. It, it, it allows you to connect with those other areas of your life. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. So for, for people who want to find out more about you and about the gym, where can they go? Cool. So you can, they can always visit my website. My website is uh, www.plantbfitness.com. Um, they can find me on Instagram. Uh, and I, I like to post a lot of my transformation photos on Instagram. So mm -hmm. my name is plant, P-L-A-N-T, the letter B. Uh, fit and then the number one. Plant B um, fit one. Okay. Correct. And then they can also, if they're in the area, if, if they're in the Oakland, California area, um, they can always come by the gym. Um, 
or set up an appointment to do an orientation. Um, and the address to the gym is 2706 Park Boulevard, Oakland, California, 94606. Okay, 94606. That's all going in the show notes. Gary, I'm, yep. so, I'm so glad our paths crossed. I'm, I'm like smiling ear to ear. And I'm so I'm in, so inspired by your hard won wisdom. Yeah, like like you're saying things that I've heard a lot, but you're you, the energy behind them is like, I yeah. believe you when you say them. They're not like platitudes from a book. So I really appreciate right. the infusion. Well, you know, I, I definitely appreciate you for re reaching out to again. I, one of the things I can say is you were a part of that way. You know, what I mean, like, like once that like once Veg News magazine kind of featured me, uh -huh. it was just I, it, and, it, and that came out of the blue. That just came like I didn't reach out for that. I didn't do anything for that. It just came out of the blue. And I was I was just blown away like this. This whole, whole uh, past six months, if, if I like I feel like I need to create a documentary about it or some sort of movie about it, because it's, it's just a testament to like when you put out the energy that you want to receive, you get it back. And I, I just want to thank you for even reaching out to me, you know, what I mean, to, you know, to to gather to, just to talk with me. You know, I appreciate that. Yeah, no, it's, it's it's great. I mean, you've got you've got a story worth telling. Um, it's inspiring to me. I know it's going to be inspiring to lots of my listeners and, Definitely. you know, points of light, man. You figure out how to do it in Oakland. People will figure out all over the place. And yeah. then one day we can like, you know, read the news and be happy. Well, yeah. And I think, too, and that's another thing, too. We need more health hubs. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like you know, one is not enough. You know, what I mean, we need a lot of people focusing on healing. We need a lot of people focusing on how to get people's minds right. We need a lot of people focusing on how to how to get people connected back to their bodies. Right. And and, and, I, and one thing I always say, and I, I'm not going to talk too much after this, but um, I love watching babies. <laughs> uh, and, and, and I feel like babies are the smartest people on the planet. And, and the reason why is because babies just do. They don't think they don't they don't deliberate. They just take, take action. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, yeah. and, and I'm not gonna say that they don't think because they do, but they don't think in a way that we can understand as adults. Yeah, they don't doubt. They, exactly. No. Whenever they want something, they go for it. And so uh, one of the quotes that I'll leave you with is um, I forgot who said this quote. And it was like, always remain childlike. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, best of luck to you and to the venture. It's been a privilege getting to know you a little bit. And, Definitely. Uh, let's let's stay in touch. And uh, maybe one, one day I'll be I'll be out on the West Coast and you can make me do burpees. Yeah, that's cool. Let me know whenever, whenever you out here, you got an open invitation, you know, come through. We can go grab some food. Uh, you know, we can do a workout, you know, definitely. Beautiful. All right, man. Take care and thanks again. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye. Yep.